whether on the individual or world level, we can stop aggression in a way that can be resolute and kind when we recognize that whatever the form of the mistake, we always need to recall that there is no hierarchy of illusions and no order of difficulty in miracles. It has no power to hide the light of Christ in God's Son. If we deny the light in one person whom we deem evil, we deny it in all persons. It cannot be that a particular individual or group has the light and no one else does. Everyone shares the light or it is nowhere because the whole is found in every part and each one is integral to the whole. The world's way of correcting errors merely reinforces them, which is why nothing ever changes here. The original error of separation is continually being recycled through projection, attack, and defense. If you point out the errors of your brother's ego, you must be seen through yours because the Holy Spirit does not perceive his errors. This must be true since there is no communication between the ego and the Holy Spirit. The ego makes no sense and the Holy Spirit does not attempt to understand anything that arises from it. The above reflects the principle of no order of difficulty in miracles and illustrates its importance. Nothing here makes sense. For example, the issue of dropping or not dropping a bomb is reasonable only if we believe there is a world that can be affected by such a decision, which there isn't. This course is difficult because it reverses every rule, principle, and law the world holds dear, without exception. The Holy Spirit cannot be trapped into judging form and does not see errors as real and then fix them. Rather, he sees all mistakes as coming from the same source, the mind's decision for the ego. The fact that the ego's and Holy Spirit's thought systems are mutually exclusive is the right-minded expression of the principle of one or the other. There can be no meeting place between them. Truth is true, illusion is illusory, and never the twain shall meet. In the following passage, Jesus makes the same point of not needing to analyze the forms taking, taken by the ego's thought system of separation and illusion, but instead moving beyond them to the content. The symbols of fantasy are of the ego, and of these you will find many, but do not look for meaning in them. They have no more meaning than the fantasies into which they are woven. Fairy tales can be pleasant or fearful, but no one calls them true. Children may believe them, and so, for a while, the tales are true for them. Yet, when reality dawns, the fantasies are gone. Since there is no order of difficulty in miracles, there is no order of difficulty in problem solving, as William Thetford used to say. As all problems, the forms of pleasant special love or fearful special hate, stem from guilt. Only returning to the mind and choosing again can erase them and undo the ego's fantasies of separation and sin. The special forms of the error do not matter, but correcting the mind's faulty decision most certainly does. When you react at all to errors, you are not listening to the Holy Spirit. He has merely disregarded them, and if you attend to them, you are not hearing Him. 
The key word here is react. That we make errors is a given. But when we react to them, it is only because we first made them real and gave them power to affect our peace. For example, we often say to others that we were peaceful until they acted unkindly, leaving us with no recourse but to act in kind. Little ch children behave this way as do big children. We all seek to justify our insane attacks by accusing those who have hurt us. You did it to me first. We find ourselves reacting to other people's errors as justification for perpetuating the ego's thought system of guilt, attack, and defense, preserving our identity as separated selves, seemingly forever.